Hello BTSs, welcome back to another video. As you guys can tell by the title, today is going to be the first time that I cover a true crime case that is based in Mexico. So if that is something that you guys are interested in, of course keep on watching. And if you are new here, hi my name is Brenda, I go by Beyond Belleza. If you would like to join my little community of BSLs, all you have to do is subscribe down below and turn on your post notifications so you do not miss a new video. Also, don't forget to give this video a huge thumbs up if you end up enjoying it whatsoever. Now, with that being said, you guys, let's go ahead and get into today's video. Alright guys, so as I said, this is my first time covering any kind of true crime case. And since it is based in Mexico and I feel like not a lot of people have heard about it but please make sure to let me know in the comments down below if this is a case that you have heard about and before I end up starting the video at all like actually <laughs> I just wanted to give a quick little warning or disclaimer whatever you want to call it that today's case does involve the deaths of children so if that is something that you do not feel comfortable with listening to of course um, just wanted to let you know ahead of time and also I don't mean any kind of disrespect towards the victims in this case or the family whatsoever. This is just basically um, more to bring awareness to it and um, I will explain more about you know once it gets to that point but just wanted to throw that out there really quickly and just that I'm this is more educational than anything else because for the most part I was going to cover this alone for it being a haunted location where this crime occurred because um, that's basically what it's mostly known for it's mostly known for the deaths and then the house being abandoned and a lot of people breaking into it to go investigate as well as having you know TV shows go and look around the house and cover it because they were on a couple of Mexican um, news channels as well and it was mostly focused on the house being haunted so I did want to talk about the actual case a little bit and commemorate the victims if that's the right word but this is just basically um, more focused on them so this is about crime that took place in Mazatlan, Mexico in Queretaro. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I kept messing it up when while I was trying to film this. Queretaro, Mazatlan, Mexico. And it was at the hands of a woman named Claudia Mijangos who was married to a man named Alfredo and they had a family together. They had three children, um, two two girls and one boy. It is said that Claudia grew up as a normal kid, you know, in a middle class family to two parents, very normal sort of life. And she was even a beauty queen pageant sort of thing. She did, she did all of those pageant runs. I don't even know what they're called, but she was even named Mazatlan's beauty queen at one point too. And there's like pictures of her out there being a beauty queen or whatever and she met Alfredo and then they ended up getting married and she was like I think in her late 20s or early 30s I'm not really sure and they ended up um, inheriting some money from her parents after they had passed away so with this money they decided to move to Queretaro in Mexico into a new home for their family to live in and they were you know living here for a while and everything was fine but her and Alfredo started having marital problems and this started around the time that she enrolled they moved here she enrolled her kids into a catholic school which she was a teacher at as well and it is said that she had an obsession with somebody with one of the priests his name was father ramon and i guess she was infatuated with him but they didn't really have anything going on from what it seemed like but because of this and she wasn't really interested in her husband anymore they were having marital problems and they ultimately ended up separating in like 1989 and so she was 33 years old at this point she was separated from her husband she was the one that stayed in the house with her kids and they had like um split up custody for them so he would pick them up drop them off all that kind of stuff and 
At this, around this time, she started having a lot of psychotic episodes and where she would have hallucinations, she would hear voices, and she, she would say that she would see demons and angels and so on and so forth. And this started happen, happening around this time where she separated from her husband. She really wasn't um, getting any reciprocation from Father Ramon or anything like that, but she was very infatuated with him. And it says that at one point, Alfredo, like, brought up this whole thing with her and Father Ramon. Like he called her out for it with her, like her obsession with him. He knew something about it and she denied it and she was defending Father Ramon. And they got into a huge argument. So he, because he was also trying to rekindle their marriage, he kept saying that they could get back together, that she needed to end whatever infatuation she had with the priest. And, and she got really pissed off from this and she even said that he was going to regret this those are her words she said she he was going to regret this whole argument so on april 23rd 1989 she's it said that after you know all of this she went and tucked her kids into bed um you know at that night and then she ended up going to bed herself and she awoke out of nowhere around 4 in the morning because she was hearing voices. And it said that she ended up calling her friend Veronica. So it's really late at night. It's 4 o'clock in the morning, as I said. And she was talking to her, just saying a bunch of nonsense, like stuff that didn't make sense. She was saying that she was having a hard time dealing with stuff and just a lot of stuff that just didn't make sense to Veronica and she was trying to calm her friend down <laughs> Veronica was telling her that it was fine that she just needed to calm down and that she would go visit her the next in like later in the morning because it was the middle of the night she was trying to sleep she couldn't go over there right this second so they end up hanging up so as soon as they ended that call Claudia got out of her bed went to the kitchen, you know, got dressed, went to the kitchen, grabbed three knives as her children were peacefully sleeping in their rooms. At about five in the morning, Claudia walks into her six-year-old son's room, Alfredo. While he's soundly asleep, she starts stabbing him and he wakes up screaming and crying. Or she even starts to amputate his hand off and Claudia's eldest daughter walks in you know hearing all of this commotion and she is the eldest one she is 11 years old her name is Claudia Maria she steps into the room and she's pleading her mom to stop her mom Claudia ends up switching to a different knife and then charges to Claudia Maria and, and stabs her six different times and Claudia Maria doesn't immediately died. She's pleading to her mom and begging her for mercy while she's making her way down the stairs trying to get away from her. And as she's doing this, Claudia switches to another knife again. So she goes next to her nine-year-old daughter, Annabelle Lynn, and stabs her in the heart. After doing this, Claudia runs down the stairs where, where Claudia Marie, her eldest daughter, is um, passed out on the floor. And after she finds her on the floor, she continues to stab her again. And the neighbors at this point are all awoken by the screams of all of the children. And they obviously are, uh, are very concerned, so they call the police. And the police find Claudia still there, and they find all of the knives just, you know, scattered around the downstairs area. And, oh, at this point also, Claudia took her eldest daughter's body from downstairs and took her, dragged her up the stairs to the master bedroom. When they get there, as I said, the police find Claudia. She's just standing there in the entryway and you know, the there's blood everywhere and upstairs after they find the bodies of the children um, who have been murdered brutally by Claudia. They, it's, a, it's just a horror show. And they take her away and after speaking to her and doing all kinds of analyzing with her and 
making sure that she is mentally sane to stand trial and then be convicted for the murders of her children. So after they analyze her, they diagnose her with schizoaffective disorder and temporal lobe epilepsy. So she's got a multitude of mental disorders, which ultimately they do end up convicting her for the murders of her three children. But because of her mental state, they declare that she will only get 30 years for these murders. Since this was in 1990 that they convicted her for these murders, she has been released about two years ago. So she is, as of two years ago, a free woman. And they have done an interview with her too for on BBC where she basically said that she doesn't feel remorse for what she did because it wasn't her because according to her it was a demonic possession that or a demonic presence that made her or instructed her to murder her kids out of nowhere because she was trying to get help for somebody to stop her from doing this which is why she called her friend Veronica and to me those words really don't come out very well because I feel like even if something else was possessing you to do it, you should feel some kind of way about it. Like, you can't just feel no type of guilt for it. And even if it was due to your mental disorders, I feel like because she didn't end up actually getting any type of help from, like, by putting herself in a hospital or something like that, that could have prevented her from doing this, she did have some kind of fault in it. But I mean, as I said, somebody else needs to help people when they have mental disorders because not a lot of the time they don't even know that they have it and they do need to get the help and have somebody else help them get that. And but from the interviews that she did in BBC, it's just her basically saying that that wasn't herself, especially because she doesn't remember, supposedly, she doesn't remember doing any of it. So to her, it, it was somebody completely different than murdered her children, and now she doesn't have them anymore because of this other person that was using her body and taking over it to, com to commit these crimes. So that is basically the whole case, and it is very tragic that her kids had to suffer in that way at the hands of their own mother because she she had no treatment for the disorders that she did have and now she's just able to walk free and um, hopefully she actually did the get the help that she needed to function as you know a normal person and that she doesn't commit a crime like this again as I said, it's only been about two years since this happened, so, you know, just hopefully there's nothing else that comes out of her that she ends up killing somebody else or happens to go into another psychotic breakdown. But just wanted to say rest in peace to the souls of her children and hopefully that they are not trapped in that house and that their souls are set free and that they are at peace wherever their souls may be but uh, guys that is basically going to be it for this case it, it was a tragic and very brutal crime that you know had just no words for it you know it just should have never happened it was just very sudden and it seems very out of the blue that you know she went 33 years of her life without ever showing any sign of this it's kind of odd to me but regardless and, you know it's done and it is something that you can't go back and change just hopefully you know as I said their whole family and then the souls of these kids are at peace now and yeah guys that is going to be it for today's video before I do end it today's comment shout out is goes to this person right here thank you so much for leaving a comment as always if you want to be the next comment shout out all you have to do is leave me a nice comment down below also please share your thoughts with me about this case i would really like to discuss it with you guys i would like to hear what you guys have to say about it but 
yeah guys thank you so much for being here watching i love and appreciate every single one of you hopefully i will see you in my next one don't forget to stay safe and be kind bye bye por ti mi corazón palpita siempre he sido tu chiquita cuantos te amos van ahorita yo ya perdí la cuenta quiero decirte que te amo